let's look at limits at infinity. In this section you will learn the concept of a limit at infinity, relate limits at infinity to horizontal asymptotes, learn how to evaluate a limit at infinity, and apply limits at infinity to real world phenomena. Consider the function f of x equals 1 divided by x. Note what happens to f of x as x gets larger and larger. The larger the values of x get, the closer f of x gets to zero. The notion of x getting larger and larger is denoted by x approaches infinity. Similarly, if x gets smaller and smaller, it's denoted by x approaching negative infinity. For the function f of x equals 1 over x, we can say that f of x equals 0 when x approaches infinity or when x approaches negative infinity. The notation limit as x approaches infinity of f of x equals L indicates that as x gets larger and larger, the function f of x gets closer and closer to some number L. Similarly, the notation the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x equals L indicates that as x gets smaller and smaller, the function f of x gets closer and closer to some number L. Infinity, however, is not a number. It is important to remember that as you study limits involving infinity, that the infinity symbol does not represent a number, but rather indicates the concept of getting arbitrarily large. Let's look at a numerical example. Consider the function f of x equals 2x squared plus 3 divided by x squared plus 2. The following table is going to show us the values of f of x as x gets arbitrarily large or arbitrarily small. Let's look at some examples. As we look at this table, you can see that as x increases positively from 1 to 1,000, the y values approach positive 1.66, 1.96, 1.99, until finally at 1,000 it's 1.99999. The same is true if we travel in the other direction. Negative 1 is 1.66, negative 10 is 1.99, and negative 1,000 is 1.99999. The table and the graph both indicate this idea about the limit as x approaches infinity of this function is going to be 2 because every single one of those y values is approaching 2. The same can be said if we talk about the limit as x approaches negative infinity. The values for the different x values as x gets smaller and smaller and smaller are also approaching 2. Let's look at a class of rational functions. To begin with, let's look at the graph of 1 divided by x squared. It's easy to see that as the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x squared is equal to 0 and the limit as x approaches negative infinity of 1 divided by x squared is also equal to 0. We can represent this by saying the limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity of 1 divided by x squared is equal to 0. Now let's consider a second example. Let's look at f of x equals 1 over x cubed. We can see from this graph that as x approaches positive infinity of 1 over x cubed, the y values are all approaching 0, so the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x cubed is 0. And we can see that if we look at what happens as x approaches negative infinity of 1 over x cubed, that this is also 0. So more compactly we can write the limit as x approaches positive or negative infinity of 1 over x cubed is 0.
it's easy to generalize these results to show that the limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity of 1 over x to the n is equal to 0. as long as n is a positive real number. Let's look at another example for limits at infinity. Let's say we're asked to find the limit as x approaches infinity of 4x squared minus 5x divided by 2x squared plus 7. What this means is we want to know if the y values are approaching a distinct number l as x gets larger and larger and larger. We start by dividing each term by the highest power of x. Remember, the highest power of x is called the degree. So we look at this problem, the limit as x approaches infinity of 4x squared minus 5x divided by 2x squared plus 7, and we can see that the largest power of x is x squared. So each one of these terms gets divided by x squared. If we simplify this, we're going to end up with the limit as x approaches infinity of 4 minus 5 over x divided by 2 plus 7 over x squared. Well, remember, the rule we just looked at says that the limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity of 1 divided by x to the n is 0. So the two terms, 5 over x and 7 over x squared, they're going to approach 0. So that's going to leave us an answer of the limit as x approaches infinity of our function is going to equal 4 divided by 2, or 2. Let's look at a second example. Let's find the limit as x approaches infinity of 7x plus 1 divided by 3x squared minus 2x. The whole time we're keeping in mind that property we learned that the limit as x approaches positive or negative infinity of 1 divided by x to the n is going to be 0. So we again start by dividing each term by the highest power of x. That's going to give us 7x over x squared plus 1 over x squared and divided by 3x squared over x squared minus 2x over x squared. If we simplify this, we're going to end up with 0 divided by 3, which is going to give us the limit of 0. There are some shortcuts for limits and infinity. If the highest exponent of the numerator is less than the highest exponent of the denominator, then the limit is equal to zero, as in the example we just did. The numerator has an exponent of one, the denominator has a highest exponent of two, this makes the limit zero. If the highest exponent of the numerator is equal to the highest exponent of the denominator, then the limit is always equal to the ratio of the leading coefficients. So in the previous example, it would be 4 as the leading coefficient in the numerator and 2 as the leading coefficient in the denominator, and that's why the limit was 2. Let's look at some examples. Example 1, find the limit as x approaches infinity where f of x equals 8x squared minus 4x plus 1 divided by 7x cubed plus 5x. We can see that the numerator degree is less than the denominator degree, so this is going to make the limit 0. Example 2. Find the limit as x approaches negative infinity of g of x, where g of x is 3x squared plus 2x divided by negative x squared plus 1. The numerator degree is 2, the denominator degree is 2, so the limit is leading coefficient divided by leading coefficient, so our answer is going to be negative 3, because 3 divided by negative 1 is negative 3. Horizontal asymptotes. If the limit at infinity exists and equals a number, say, L, then the line y equals L is a horizontal asymptote for the function. Horizontal asymptotes, example one. Consider again the following examples. Example one, find the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x, 
where f of x equals 8x squared minus 4x plus 1 divided by 7x cubed plus 5x. We know that the limit equals 0. Well, this also means that f of x has a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Example 2, find the limit as x approaches negative infinity of g of x, where g of x is 3x squared plus 2x divided by negative x squared plus 1. The limit equals negative 3. This means that f of x has a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative 3. Example 2 for horizontal asymptotes. The function y equals the arctan of x has two horizontal asymptotes at y equals pi over 2 and y equals negative pi over 2. You can see that the graph approaches but does not touch these two numbers as x approaches infinity and as x approaches negative infinity. Therefore, the limit as x approaches infinity is pi over 2 and the limit as x approaches negative infinity is negative pi over 2.